Welcome back to what remains of Edith Finch. We've just exited out of Walter's little place in the ground and come out to the train tracks. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. So Edith Finch said, one of us, maybe two of us. Are they referring to Milton, who went missing and was never found? What is that? Blinking red light. Is it a... Maybe a buoy kind of dashed on the rocks? I don't know, it almost seems like there's a wreckage there though. It doesn't really look like a buoy. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Ah, look at that view. It's gorgeous. Why is there a chair in the tree? Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. Ah, wow, the shadows look so cool. I thought you should know about your family. Who's you? Who, who is, um, who's Edith writing this for? and the history you're a part of. Ah, oh, look at these glistening, glistening rocks. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. Yeah, I mean, the stories are so fantastical. I mean, what actually happened? Seems undeniable that these people actually died somehow. Like, was Walter killed by a train? Their memorial seems to be there next to the train tracks, but I don't know. Are the stories really any more absurd than the house itself, though? And when you look at the house, that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, 
any of it seems possible. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? <laughs> it's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three of the gerbils were mine, and two had been my fault. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, there's all the birds. At least most of them birds. Zerpy, lerpy, furpy, chirpy, burpy, derpy, derpy junior. Uh, those don't have names, but they've got little shapes carved out of the headstones. I guess showing what they were. That was a fish, and that was a bunny. Kitty cat, bunny, fish. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Whoa. Oh my god, that is so cool. Kitty cat angel. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Oh, is that the is that the wreck of the ship? Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Oh, it's the old house, the one that went under the water. view really is just extraordinary. Yeah, so this island is fairly large. You can see there's a bunch of houses over there. And over there. I feel like there's something I need to do with this thing here. Oh, maybe not. I can't seem to use it anymore. Whoops. Where do I go from here? Do I go back? Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. Oh. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. 
Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along for me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. But looking back on it now, If she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Ah, so that's who they're writing it for. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. <laughs> a little outside grilling patio. Are those? Let's see if I can get closer. Are those milk carton nests? Oh, they are. Or, oh no, they're not nests, they're feeders. They were both pretty intense. Wow, yeah, my god. War trophies, bear rugs, and guns, and... America flags. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm. Am I gonna have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Hmm. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. <laughs> You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Hey! <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, I'm not always going to be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Ah, uh, alright. 
Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish, how to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Give me a minute to check the map. Dad. Ooh, hello. Good <gasps> eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Focus on your target. Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Yes, killing animals makes you strong. Now keep yourself squared up, elbows down, like we practiced. Whenever you're ready. Great shot, Don! Oh yeah, <laughs> great picture. I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Oh, I'm in control of them now. Oh, what Sorry, a Don, wonderful just family the timer. moment. It's twitching. I think That's it's totally still... normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. That was really disturbing. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. I'm, like, really not okay with hunting, so... Yeah. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Yes, and pose dead bodies and take pictures with them next to your crying daughter. Very nice, Sam. Very nice. Rear. Angry cat. I don't even want to explore this room. I just want to get the hell out of here. MREs. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Pinch control. for one year. Don 
Gus. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... Well, I think we better look at this one first. Divorce contract? Hold on. No! I want to read the divorce contract. <laughs> Why would that be there? Um, not much to read there, I guess. So it's between Kay Carlisle and Sam Finch. I did not mean to put it back a second time, I'm sorry. There Dear we go. Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Damn it. Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam.
such joy next to such sadness. So they drowned. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. I'm actually flying the kite, by the way. Oh, that is so cool. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss pride. Resilient. Ah, here we go. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, Make the music louder! I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Evacuation plan for the Finch household. House rules, no playing outside without permission, no answering door for strangers, no messes after dark, all chores before dark, respect others. Raise flag, breakfast, quiet time, duties, routine. Oh, a little climbing wall. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. I have to go up there, right? Yeah. That's the sealed At door. At the time, it was as far away as she could get.
Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Oh, <laughs> look at this old computer. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Ah, so... So Don and Sanjay, they're the... The, uh, the parents. June 1987. Stuff and stuff and stuff. Pack, fly to India. Religion, science, math, history. College application. Deadlines. Oh. <laughs> High school ID? My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Lewis was... Ah, right. Them. The one, not the person who... I think it was, what was it, about 10 days before they died, that, um, Eddie was drawing a portrait of them, painting a portrait of them. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. <laughs> There's little figurines all around here. Some herbs, thyme, sage, basil, mint. All dead. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. Oh, so this, right, we're, we're really high up there now. This is where they just kept adding to the top. Very, very dangerously. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Great job. Family history, fact or fiction? Good question. <laughs> A little like preschool teaching room. Lewis rules. <laughs> but it didn't last. A laptop. Relief efforts end in disaster. That's Sanjay. Hundreds of relief volunteers are injured or dead after the effects of a second earthquake. I'm guessing that's how Sanjay died. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday when Edie gave him a castle. Milton. Ah, the one that went missing. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. No. 
no death date. Because Dawn never gave up hope. I think I'm going to end this episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to explore Milton's room.